Welcome back to Learn Economia. So in this video, we are going to see the Stolper Samuelson theorem. Having discussed uh, several theories in the arena of international trade, uh, we have to discuss the Stolper Samuelson theorem right now. So we have seen what is um, the theories proposed by mercantilism, protectionism. Then we have seen the theory of Adam Smith that is absolute cost advantage. Then we have seen the theory of uh, Ricardo that is the comparative cost advantage. Then we have uh, seen the factor endowment theory or the Hesher of the model. We have seen the Diodic paradox. So uh, thus we have seen several theories in the arena of international economics. And now having discussed these theories, we are going to see the stolper samuelson theorem. Let's get started. If you remember the hesher rohin model, uh, it would be very much easy to understand the stolper samuelson theorem. And since I have already discussed the hesher rohin model, uh, I don't want to go back to that in this video. Uh, so if you have not watched that video which discusses the hesher rohin model, I request you to watch that and come back to this to understand the stolper samuelson theorem. So the stolper samuelson theorem, it is considered to be uh, playing a very important role in the arena of international economics. It plays a very central uh, role because it has got some central results in the arena of international trade. It actually answers one important question. <coughs> Sorry. So the question is, what is the effect of changes in the price of goods? Uh, which is caused by changes in the tariff on the prices of factors of production. So this uh, question would be answered uh, by the stolper samuelson theorem. So if there is any if there is any implication upon the uh, price of the of a particular commodity which is produced with the help of some factor and the, the price of the factor is, is, is changed as a result of imposition of tariff on the factor. So that's it. Uh, so this theorem was first presented by uh, Wolfgang Stolper. Then Samuelson has dealt with this theorem. So actually we have to see that uh, as in the case of uh, all economics theories, this theorem too have got certain restrictive assumptions. And these are mainly, basically based on two broad sectors and that production uses only two factors. So we, uh, these are the two broad uh, restrictive assumptions. Uh, first one is that uh, the pr uh, production uses only two factors that is capital and labor and it takes care of only two sectors in the economy. We know that the theoretical framework has shown the essential features of uh, the theorem which hold more generally as well. Uh, so if you go to the empirical framework or when this theory was put to empirical framework, it could understand that. So um, uh, when the effect of globalization was incorporated, uh, this had some effects. Uh, globalization or the effect of increased globalization of income distribution in developed countries uh, and the long run political commitments of the classes and interest groups all were taken into consideration when empirical issues were taken into uh, account. So um, I don't want to go to the details of those things, but just understand what the stolper samuelson theorem is or theory is. In order to understand that, I am going to give you a very uh, simple example. Just see that one sector produces goods for export and another sector produces goods for imports. Okay, imports, uh, impo not goods for imports, but uh, goods which compete with imports. So there are two sectors. One sector would be producing goods for exports and the other, and the other sector would be producing goods which are import competed or it's, which compete with imports. So you here you have to assume that uh, in addition to the import competing sector, uh, you will be having an exporting sector as well. So here, just see that or just uh, suppose that uh, the, your import competent sector is labor intensive. Okay, your import competent sector is labor intensive. So that means that it uses more of labor compared to capital. And your the labor in, uh, in intensity 
uh, in the import competing sector is more than uh, what is used in the other sector or, or the exporting sector so just see that the importing import competing sector is uh, more labor intensive whereas in the case of exporting sector that is capital intensive okay now <coughs> just suppose that if there is a uh, tariff on some sector or one sector just just think about that or just ask what could be the effect of a tariff on some uh, or some change which would be raising the variety price of the import competing sectors output that is what the conduct states okay provided that the economy is uh, at full employment or the economy is very much close to the full employment of both the factors both labor as well as capital there if there is some kind of expansion in one sector that would reduce the output in the other sector right so the combined expansion of the relatively labor intensive sector and contraction of the capital intensive sector would be raising the aggregate demand for the labor uh, in the economy relative to capital in the economy what will happen if the demand for labor increase so if the demand for labor increases the price of the labor increases that means that the price of labor is wage the wage rate would increase in the economy so because the price of export has not changed a higher wage must imply that a fall in the return to capital so wage would rise by um, more percentage than the price of imports thus you can see that when import competing goods are relatively labor intensive wage earners would be gaining because there would be more demand for labor as a result there would be more increase in wage rate in the economy so the people who uh, own uh, labor labor uh, skill they will be gaining whereas in the case of capital the capital owners they would be losing right because these are in production the goods which are capital intensive are reduced or there is a contraction in the production of capital intensive goods uh, whereas there is an expansion in the production of labor intensive goods as a result demand for labor increases so wage rate increases and demand for capital would be uh, lessened as a result the uh, the remuneration paid to capital would be uh, would be reduced so the starkness and elegance of this theorem in its simplest form from from that much study or uh, regarding its robustness uh, so many uh, economists have studied this theory so like uh, economists like ather johns etc they have highlighted the central prediction of this theorem and they have seen whether this theory would be standing if you are uh, using all its assumptions or what would happen if you relax certain assumptions so with many goods as well as factors a tariff change will always raise the real return of at least one factor and lower the return of at least one another factor or one other factor if you go to the generalization with respect to this particular theorem you could see that <coughs> it doesn't contradict with the basic prediction of international trade theory that economies would be facing fixed world prices and these would be helping these economies to gain over the tariff reduction so uh, here another key assumption is that all factors are fully mobile we have seen that all factors are fully utilized all factors are fully employed but uh, another assumption is that all factors are fully mobile so if you relax this assumption uh, for one of the two factors uh, we could see that the simplest case is the specific factor model which would be providing an illuminating contrast with the sho model we have seen that this particular uh, model or the stopper samuelson theorem is an, an extension kind of thing or is this is considered to be a uh, expansion of the hesher hoffman model and uh, uh, whereas in certain cases it would come in contrast with the hesher hoffman model protection would be continuing to increase the real return of one factor and uh, in this case it would be increasing the uh, return of a, of a factor which is used uh, intensively in the import competing sector right as a result it will lower the real return of uh, another factor that is specific to the exporting sector so the specific factor model can be viewed as depicting a short run equilibrium over time what would happen is that specific factor would be losing their distinctive character and uh, so these would be uh, mobile intersectorally as well as a result the stopper samuelson theorem uh, 
theorem predictions are restored. What are the applications of this particular model? It, this is a famous theorem. If you uh, are aware, uh, you can understand that it is one of the famous theorems in this in the arena of international economics. So international economics, uh, whenever you deal with the subject, you could understand that this is a very, very famous theorem. So as a result, it has got many applications as well. It addresses trade and wages debate. It would be asking the question, what extent globalization in general uh, and increase imports from low wage countries in particular are responsible for widening the differential between skilled as well as unskilled wages. And this is uh, very much peculiar to the developed economies. And coming to the use of technology, you can see that uh, uh, technological progress plays a very important role in the expansion. and um, uh, and you could see that may some economists have presented evidences regarding uh, favor of stobel samuelson theorem, its chain of causation, uh, whereas more, many economists have preferred to explain the fall in demand for unskilled labor uh, by if there is some kind of skill-based biasness uh, with respect to technological progress. Some economists like uh, Johns, uh, they have developed a theory which is consistent with empirical evidence uh, uh, with uh, Stoffer Samuelson theorem. And uh, if you look uh, more, you could see that improved communications have allowed large firms to um, fragment their operations. That means that some kind of assembly line production, uh, or in sometimes it would be assembly line production, or at other times it can be uh, like uh, one part of the uh, product would be produced in one location, another part would be produced in another location. So these kinds of things can also happen. So here also the skill of the labor would be coming into play. Uh, whenever the skills comes into play, you can see that that would be something which affect the wage rate. Okay, and finally the super samples and finally you can see that this theorem has been used to explain the political economy of responses to changes in countries exposure to trade. We know that whenever there is some kind of political problems in the economy that would definitely affecting the trade uh, actions of the country. For example, if you take into consideration the Russia-Ukraine war that has affected the export as well as import of both these countries. So, using an external model with three factors. In this model, we have only two factors that is labor and capital. Just include uh, land as well here. So, uh, you could see that uh, so uh, uh, the person who has incorporated the person who has incorporated land into this model has deployed a wide range of historical evidence to show how differences in factor and governments could help cross country variation in the impact of trade of nations internal political situations so that's about today's uh, session uh, i request you to like share and subscribe to this channel again i request you to be a part of my telegram channel and telegram group to discuss your doubts i'll be providing the links of the same in the description box that's all for today thank you